a very challenging environment, the DBCC says, yet the interagency body is confident domestic demand will see us through. Now joining me now to dissect this further is Joseph Incalcaterra. He is the Asia economist at HSBC and he joins us live from its headquarters in Hong Kong. Joseph, thanks for being with us again this morning. Let's get right into it. The government's cut its growth target this year to 6.7% to between 6.7% to 7.8%. Now they've held on to that magic goal of between 7 to 8% for so long. Does this worry you at all, the fact that they're sort of backpedaling a little bit? It doesn't worry us at all. It's actually just a bit of more realistic growth target and it takes into account some of the external weakness um, that, that, that the Philippine economy is facing. Uh, granted, the Philippines isn't as sensitive to weaker trade or weaker conditions in China, for example, than other countries, but it still obviously impacts growth. Uh, so the fact that the government's being a bit more realistic in its growth target, we don't think is necessarily a problem. And that doesn't change your outlook for the country uh, for the full year? Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, we still have a very relatively optimistic view on the, on the Philippines. Granted, our forecast is a bit, uh, is a bit softer. We're, are, we're looking at growth closer to 6%, um, but still it's an outperformer. And um, when you look at the domestic drivers of growth, they are indeed very robust. And we expect actually a very strong growth rating, particularly in the first quarter and in the first half, alongside uh, additional spending from the election as well as continued government spending and infrastructure spending, which, like we saw in the fourth quarter, is actually a very important driver of growth. Right. Joseph, in the latest assessment, the forecast for exports and imports were also pulled down. And when you look at it, it only makes sense. There's pressure from all sides. On the one hand, you have Abenomics running out of steam, running out of options, and then you have China still not out of the woods yet. When you look at the trade picture in the region as a whole, do you see any glimmers of hope? Any bright spots? Uh, so I would first say that the, yeah, I would first say that the the trade picture is you know equally bleak for everybody, um, but there actually are some bright spots for the Philippines and particularly for Southeast Asia. Uh, just note that this year we have the introduction of the AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community, and what that's doing is trying to accelerate some of this liberalization of services, trade, of investment, and this could benefit the Philippines, particularly in terms of incoming investment. And uh, given that the Philippines is a services export powerhouse, actually the reduction of, um, of non-tariff barriers, of, um, of obstacles to services trade is actually a positive for the Philippines. And then note that last year the Philippines um, was granted EU GSP plus uh, tariff exemption by the European Union. So that's been in place for some time now, but that basically allows the Philippines to gain some more market share with the EU. Um, so n nothing huge, but they are making some small strides and um, increasing, increasing some of the exports there, even if the overall environment is very, is very bleak, like I said before. And then lastly, I think services generally are actually doing a lot better, even services trade with China, services trade with other markets. Um, BPO exports, we know, are actually increasing. And this is, um, these are right. some of the positive uh, external, external tidbits we have from the Philippines. Right. So talking about services, let's talk about one of the other growth drivers, remittances. You once called remittances the country's natural external buffer against global shock. But Bloomberg consensus estimates for the December trade figure, which we're, we are getting later this week, is for figures to rise just by 0.1%. This considering that December is supposed to be the strongest month for remittances. What's going on there? Is this just a blip or is this the start of a downtrend? Uh, so Philippi uh, the uh, remittances have been and still are a natural buffer for the Philippines. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what keeps uh, the current account firmly entrenched in surplus. Uh, and, and note that it's coming off of a very high base. We've seen many years of very strong growth in remittances. Uh, so the, the stock of remittances is still quite, quite strong. Um, but yeah, we are seeing a bit of a downturn. And this isn't necessarily yet because of the Middle East. Um, remittances have been coming down for quite a few months now since the second half of 2015 and a lot of that can actually be attributed to possibly financial regulation from the U.S., uh, different regulatory moves that basically have limited uh, U.S. institutions from dealing with um, some counterparts in the Philippines perhaps. Um, so um, we, we've seen a slowdown for various reasons. We also think it is fair to assume that there might be a bit of a slowdown in remittances from the Middle East, but still nothing too drastic. Um, and, and regarding December, December, you know, on a seasonal basis, there's always a pickup. But on year-on-year -year terms, actually, uh, we tend to see that every year. So it, it won't really show up in year-on-year in -year numbers. Uh, so the, the weakness that we're expecting for December is more due to the broader factors I just mentioned.
Right. The government does say as far as the Middle East situation is concerned, it is currently not a crisis. We appreciate your insights. Thanks very much, Joseph.